Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live church member broadcast. And today I'll be sharing with you on the Spirit-led decision. The Spirit-led decision. Decision made according to the instruction of the Spirit. If you truly want to live a productive life, a life of influence, a life that is consistent with the purpose of God, then you have to make your decision based on the leading of the Spirit. One of the ways we can bring setback to our life is when we make decisions from offense, from heart, from experience that is not consistent with the will of God, it can lead to setback. The spirit-led decision is the pathway to supernatural increase. If you want to see supernatural increase, multiplication in every area of your life, you have to respond to the leading of the spirit. What it has to do with your business, with your job, with your relationship, with your faith, whatever you want to do, there is a need for you to trust the leadership of the Spirit in your decision making. Why should I trust in the leadership of the Spirit? Because He knows more than I do. I may make decisions based on statistic and facts, but the Spirit of God knows the future. He knows my past, then I know my future. He knows everything about me. So if I trust in the leadership of the Spirit, that is the doorway to supernatural victory. The Spirit-led decision is very strategic in moving forward in purpose. If you're truly going to move forward in your purpose, you have to consider the Spirit-led decision. I don't want to make decisions because of what they said. I don't want to make decisions based on their opinion. I don't want to make decisions based on how I feel. I want to make a decision based on the instruction of the Spirit. The New Testament believer is expected to make decisions based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you make the decision without the leading of the Holy Spirit, you're opening door for crisis. And there are a lot of people today that they regret of their action, they regret of their decision, they regret of the things they did because of their inability to trust in the leadership of the Spirit. You know the scripture established in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, I'd like us to look at that scripture in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. And it said something very important here. In Romans 8 14 he said for as many as are led by the Spirit of God led by the Spirit of God this is the key to unlocking a great life this is what it takes as many for as many as are led by the Spirit of God not led by money not led by title not led by opinion not led by subjection, not led by uh, the flesh, as many that are led by the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit knows about your future. The Spirit knows what is going to show up in the next five years with that job, with that relationship, with that person. He knows what is going to happen. The Spirit is eternal. 
he he has he ha, he has uh, uh, the knowledge of the eternal program of God. The spirit has a knowledge of the eternal program of God. So for that reason, we need to depend on his leadership. He knows the future. He will tell us how to navigate and move in the direction of the will of God. This is why developing intimacy with the Holy Spirit is important. Developing intimacy with the Holy Spirit as you will not be making decisions that will lead to tears. Yes. As you don't make the decision that will lead to a broken heart. A lot of us, our heart has been broken. We have lost relationship, businesses, finances, people in our lives that we thought they could have been there with us. But in the first place, God did not put them there. And maybe in the second place, God may have put them there. But because of our inability to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, we are quick to be angry. We are quick to be frustrated. And then we start saying things or doing things that destroy the beauty of that relationship that God has given to us. There are people that God puts in your life as a gift of reward. There are people that God has put in your life as a gift of reward. You must understand that when we talk about open doors, sometimes that God just opened a door, that God just opened a door. Sometimes the open door we talk about is a new relationship that gave us favor or opportunity or platform to do what God expects us to do because God opened the heart of someone to be a blessing to us. Most times when we talk about open door, breakthrough, sometimes is a relationship that God is using to reward your efforts. God is using to say to you, I am with you. I'm standing with you. So it is important we listen to the Spirit of God. It's important. And someone may ask me a question. How do I uh, make, uh, how do I how do, I, how do I get into spirit-led decision? How do I make spirit-led decision? How do I do that? Now, I want to read this in Romans chapter 8. And like us to read from verse 5. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. He said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. You see, the flesh is a way of life that is in opposition to God's ways of doing things. The flesh is a way of life that is in opposition to God's ways of doing things. Paul talked about walk in the Spirit. Paul said, walk in the Spirit that you know fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, walk in the Spirit. How do I walk in the Spirit? By allowing God's Word to influence my thinking, to influence my motive, to influence my action, to influence my lifestyle. By allowing God's word to influence my way of doing things. If I don't let the word of God influence my ways of doing things, that simply means I'm in the flesh. A man in the flesh will project the, 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 the things of the flesh beyond the things of the spirit. So Paul here was ministering and he said something. He said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You see, this is not the lifestyle God called us into. He never called us into the lifestyle of the flesh because the lifestyle of the flesh is not productive. The lifestyle of the flesh have the potential to ruin our work with God. The lifestyle of the flesh can hinder the possibility of the greatness that God expects us to come into. So here he's saying, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. We could see there is a clear decision here. If you are after the things of the flesh, you can be sensitive to the leading of the spirit. I want to say that again. I said, if you're after the things of the flesh, you can be sensitive. You won't be sensitive to the leadings of the spirit. Because a man in the flesh is only seeing how he, you know, he's, he's seeing how it's going to work out for him, how it's going to happen for him, how he will feel good about it. But a man in the spirit is thinking the will of God. 
It's thinking God's ways of doing things. I, I just want to do it according to God's way. So here he said, a man who is after the flesh will mind the things of the flesh. Now, you can train yourself to mind the things of the flesh, or you can train yourself to mind the things of the spirit. You can train yourself to be spiritually minded, or you can train yourself to be carnally minded. A, a believer can be carnally minded when they train themselves in that direction. When they don't pay attention to God's word, they don't pay attention to his instruction, to his ways of doing things. When a man is in the flesh, he's always going to lose. And this is where a lot of Christians have gone into trouble because their decision was not spirit-led decision. The decision was offense-led decision. The decision was born out of anger, out of rage, out of strife, out of contention, out of competitive jealousy, out of pain. And they, they made the decision without allowing the leadership of the Spirit to take the lead. For the leadership of the Spirit to take the lead, we have to submit ourselves to the integrity of God's Word. You know the scripture established in Romans 12 verse 2, it said we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. One of the ways we make progress is when our mind is consistently being renewed by God's Word. When your mind is consistently being renewed by the word of God, it helps you to become sensitive towards the things of the spirit. You can be sensitive towards the things of the spirit, towards the leadership of the spirit, if your mind is not renewed with God's word. Jesus was ministering in John Gospel chapter 6. He said, the words I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. In John 15 verse 3, he said, the, the, the word I've spoken, he said, ye are cleansed by the word which I've spoken to you. So to the degree I renew my mind with God's word will determine how sensitive I am to God's thoughts. To the degree I renew my mind with God's word will determine how sensitive I am to the thoughts of God. I am to God's ways of doing things. I become more sensitive. One of the keys to a spiritual success is to be flexible. When I talk about flexibility, I'm talking about you being in a state where you can easily follow God. You can easily respond to Him. If it takes you this way, you can move. It takes you that way, you can move. You are not rigid. And there are many people that are rigid. What they know is what they expect. But sometimes what you know may not be what it is. And for that reason, you have to respond to the instruction of the Spirit. In your business, you need a spirit-led decision. You can't just make decision, financial decision based on how you feel about the product or this is the current product, it's selling the market, everybody's buying it. But the Holy Ghost is not leading you into it. The spirit-led decision is what leads to fruitfulness. One of the ways we become fruitful is when we respond to the Spirit-led decision. We will make our decision based on the leading of the Spirit. So I'm telling you how this decision will be possible. When verse 6, look at the scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it said, it said, For to be carnally minded is that a man who is carnal can make decisions that is consistent with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Carnality does not produce godliness. Carnality does not produce a God kind of result. When people are carnal, it means their way of thinking and doing things is in opposition to biblical truths. It's in opposition to biblical truths. So but God doesn't want me to be a person who is in the flesh. He wants me to be a man of the spirit as I can make decisions that will glorify him. So for we to make the spirit-led decision, a decision that is based on the leadership of the spirit, we need to have the word of God in our spirits. In Colossians 3.16 he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, for anyone to make a right decision, they have to make that decision based on what God's word have said. And if I don't have the word of God in my spirit, I'll be moving in a direction of frustration. I'm moving in a direction of pain, in a direction of shame, in a direction of lack. But if I'm going to truly succeed with my calling, with my assignment, I got to make my decision based on God's instruction. 
God gives you instruction for the purpose of direction. God gives you instruction for the purpose of empowering you to move in the direction of his will. Instructions are very strategic, especially when that instruction is rooted in biblical principles. And hear what the word of the Lord is saying here, for to be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For you to make a spirit-led decision, you have to be spiritually minded. Being spiritually minded helps you to navigate in the right direction, helps you to move in the right direction, being spiritually minded. And one of the keys to being spiritually minded is to read the word of God, is to meditate on God's word, is to pray in the spirit. These are the keys to being spiritually minded, to read the word of God, to meditate on scriptures, to pray in the spirit and to submit yourself to God's word. These are basic keys to being spiritually minded. You read the word of God. You meditate on God's word. You put the word of God first. And then you pray in the spirit. You pray in the spirit. As you pray in the spirit, you be sensitive to the voice of God. As you pray in the spirit, you be quick to respond to his ways of doing things. You see, this is a very strategic foundation for living the supernatural life. As you pray in the spirit, your hearing comes alive. I'm telling you, the way you hear will change. You will just know. You will just know when God is leading you there. You will just know when. See, sometimes you don't need to ask God, Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do? We can't be asking that kind of question all the time. But if you're spiritually minded, you will always know what to do. You will always know the direction to go. He will just be leading you. The will of God is not for him to be, for you to be asking him, Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do? His will is that he wants you to be responding to his leading. He wants to be showing you go this way, move that way. And it is through his spirit that is being achieved. And to the degree you are, your mind is renewed with God's word will determine how you receive direction. God will just drop it in your heart. You know, it is in few occasions where we can ask questions and say, Lord, what do I do? But if you begin to renew your mind with God's word, if you begin to spend time praying in the spirit, you will always know. There is this knowing that comes to you. You just know. And someone said, how did you know? How did you know? You just knew. You just knew this is the way. You just knew. You know the scripture saying Isaiah to the 30 verse 21. He said you will hear a word saying to you, this is the way. You just know. How did you know? Suddenly you just knew that this is the man to marry. This is the woman to marry. This is the business to do. This is the church to join. This is the minister to partner with. This is the people to talk with. You just know. This knowing comes from fellowship. This knowing comes from yielding to the ways of the Spirit. You just know. You shouldn't be spending a long time asking God, Lord, what do I do? Lord, what do I do? No, what you need to do is to begin to renew your mind and begin to pray in the Spirit. As you renew your mind and pray in the Spirit, you'll be sensitive. You will just know. It's like a river. It's flowing towards a direction and you're just following that river. You're just following. You're just going. And people will be wondering, how do you know when God has spoken? How did you know this? You just know. It's a knowing. You just know. You just know right inside of you. You knew that this is what God is asking me to do. This is what God is asking me to do. This is what God is asking me to say. This is where God is asking me to follow. Who to follow. You know, you just knew. A lot of people have traveled to go and hear the voice of God. Nothing wrong with that. They packed their bags. They said, I'm going to seek God. They packed their bag, they travel and said, I'm going to look for God. They travel to one place, I'm going, they're looking for God, but he's in them. You see, to the degree you, you have the revelation of the Christ in you will determine the level of peace you're going to enjoy. The level of peace you're going to enjoy is directly related to the revelation of the Christ in you. If I don't have the revelation that he's in me, I'll be moving from here to here. I want to hear from God. So I need to travel to this convention. I want to hear from God. I need to travel for this seminar. No, no, that is not how God speaks to people. 
If you train yourself that way, you always be in trouble. If you think by traveling, you will hear the voice of God. No, create this mindset that God speaks to me wherever I find myself. He can speak to me in the restroom. He can speak to me while I'm driving. Have a relationship with God to a point that God can even tell you the clothes to wear. He can say, why not do this today? Why not do that today? Why not do this shit today? You know, he can, he can get involved in every aspect of your life. He can begin to show you where to go, who to move into, where to move into. Let me share this to you. God, our relationship with God is not only based on spiritual things. God also wants to address your financial issue. He wants to tell you what to do about your finances. He wants to tell you what to do about your relationship. All of this begins when you have a foundation of His Word. All of this begins when you begin to spend time with Him and then He begins to show you what to do. You can know the will of God for your life. It's not difficult to know the will of God. It's not difficult to hear from God. You know, sometimes the way people make about uh, hearing from God, they make it look very difficult. Oh, it's difficult to hear from God. I need to fast to hear from God. It is good to fast, but that is not what makes us hear from God. Fasting is good. Fasting helps you to subject your body. It also helps to increase your sensitivity. But it's not every time you want to hear from God, then you're going to fasting to hear from Him. So what about in situations where you have emergency and and you don't know what to do, so do you start the fast? The, before, before you finish fasting, the person is already dead. Or before you finish fasting, something has already gone wrong. The scripture said, as many as are led, look at that scripture, Romans chapter 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, led by the Spirit. The leadership of the Spirit is always available to us. But most times, most of us are not available in responding to his instruction. The leadership of the Spirit is always available to us. Sometimes, you know, he comes through peace. You know, he said the kingdom of God is no meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can really know when God is moving you in a direction. You can you can really tell when God is moving you in a direction you can know it's not difficult. It's not difficult. If if you have a friend and you and this friend talks every day, is it difficult to hear from your friend? This friend chats with you, she calls you on phone, you call her on phone, you have you are used to her voice. If someone else calls you with her phone, you you will ask the question, where is she? Because you're used to her voice. If you think that it is easy to relate with men, don't you know it is more easy to relate with God? It is more easy to hear the voice of God and understand the voice of God than the voice of man. But the problem most of the time is that a lot of people see that hearing the voice of God is something that is complex, you know, is very difficult, you know, it's not easy to hear from God. No, that is not true. He said, my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow. And the voice of a stranger, they will not respond to. My sheep will hear my voice. So when someone said, I'm not hearing the voice of God, I'm not hearing the voice of God, I'm trying to know what the Lord will say to me. Listen, don't, don't get involved. Well, that is a spiritual scam. A lot of people are being scammed spiritually by the enemy. My sheep will hear my voice. You know when something is truth. You see, the way your spirit was wired is that you should know when something is truth. When something is true. But that begins to happen as you fellowship with the word. As you fellowship with the word and bring the spirit, you become sensitive. You're quick to know that this is what the Lord wants me to do. This is where the Lord wants me to go. This is who the Lord wants me to connect with. This is who the Lord wants me. God wants to lead you personally. He doesn't want to lead you through a preacher. He doesn't want to lead you through a prophet. He wants to lead. That was why the scripture, the, scripture, the scripture said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit. You have the Holy Ghost in you. I said you have the Holy Ghost in you. The day you got born again, that was the same day the Spirit of God have come to dwell in you. For before you became born again, it was the Spirit of God who convinced you to, to receive Jesus. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the help of the Holy Ghost. Nobody can say that. That Jesus is Lord. When you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. 
Nobody can say that Jesus is Lord except by the help of the Spirit of God. So you have the Spirit inside of you. And this Spirit you have inside of you, He has many areas in which it's going to work. Somebody can have the Holy Ghost in their life, the Holy Spirit in their life, and they don't speak in tongues. Because that is a different experience. To speak in tongues is a different experience. Just that someone is not praying in tongue doesn't mean they don't have the Holy Spirit in them if they are born again. Speaking in tongues is an experience have you received since you believe. Speaking in tongues is a different experience. But the day you got born again, the Holy Ghost has come to dwell in you. Nobody can help you like the Spirit of God. He will guide you into all truths. You cannot understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit. You cannot truly interpret the Bible without the Holy Spirit. You, you cannot even know the truth. You can't know the difference between deception and, and error and, uh, and truth without the Holy Spirit. This is why he said he will, for as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, led by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost that begins to show you what to do. So when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God has come to dwell in you. And the Spirit can also come upon you to do the things that God will have you to do. And we can desire the gift of praying in tongues. And the Holy Ghost can baptize us with that and we begin to pray in the Spirit. Praying in tongues is the prayer language. Praying in tongues is a prayer language. The Holy Spirit did not end with praying in tongues. I said the Holy Spirit didn't end in praying in tongue. The ministry of the Spirit did not end with tongue. Tongue is one of the gifts of the Spirit. It didn't end with tongue because some Christians think that the ministry of the Holy Ghost ends with tongue. No! There is more to the Holy Spirit than praying in tongues. We pray in tongues to get ourselves ready for what He's going to do and how He's going to do it. How we're going to flow with Him. As we pray in the Spirit, we are opening doors in the realm of the Spirit to step into the flow, into what God wants us to experience. As you pray in tongues, this is why I'm calling people to pray in the Spirit. As you pray in the Spirit, there are certain doors that are open and you be sensitive to know the right door. To know the right door, to flow in the right door, to connect with the right door. It is by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit. So the Holy Ghost is in your life to help you manage your life, to help you show you what to do, how to move, how to take steps, what to say, what not to say. The Spirit is in you. When you say the wrong thing, He will convict you. He, he will convict, convict you and say, hey, that thing you said was not right. No, you should repent of that. It is the Spirit that makes us repent. It is by the Spirit who can know that what we just said was wrong or what we just did is wrong. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be convicted of sin. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be convicted of sin. It is Him when you fall into sin or did something wrong. It is the Holy Ghost that bear witness with your spirit that that thing you did was wrong. In the flesh, you can't do that what you did was wrong. It is the Holy Ghost that will tell you that is wrong. And then you say, Lord, I repent. Forgive me my sin. I'm sorry. You, you, you repent. And as you say, Lord, forgive me, the, the, the peace is returned. The joy returned. And you continue to move. That was why David said, cast me not away. You know, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. Because he knows that if the Spirit is not helping him, he was going to miss everything gonna miss everything it is by the spirit we know who to marry it is by the spirit we know where to go it is by the spirit we make right decision pay attention to the leadership of the spirit if you want a better life pay attention to his leadership if you want to reign in life a lot of people are making decisions based on their feeling but they're not making decisions based on the leading of the spirit if you're watching this broadcast, if you're listening to me, it's time to read the Bible. It's time to meditate on the Word of God. It's time to pray in the Holy Spirit, to pray in tongues, as you can be sensitive. As you can easily flow with Him, you know, you can easily move in the direction and, and just know and just know and, and just know this is where God is leading me to. This is what God will have me do. You will never be struggling to know what is the will of God for me, what does God want me to do, where does God want me to go. Who does? No, 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 you will never be struggling with that. You just know. You just know. By the Spirit, you knew. 
by the Spirit you made a connection. And there is someone watching me today. The Holy Ghost is saying this. In this season, you will need me to make progress. I told my children something this morning. I told them life is a journey and you will need God all the way. Life is a journey and you will need God all the way. You will need God all the way. Life is a journey. You will need God all through life. You can never say, well, I don't need God anymore. Now I, I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. I don't need God. No, my friend, you will need God all the way from the beginning to the end. You will need God all the way. And the only way you can receive his help is when you yield to the Spirit of God. Yielding to the Holy Ghost is the key to making a right decision. So when you're watching me today, be conscious of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive of His presence. Be sensitive of he, Him being around you, Him living inside of you. And that way, you're going to make progress. You're going to make progress. You're, you're going to move in the right direction. It's time to listen to the Spirit of God. It's time to say, Holy Spirit, show me what to do. It's time to say, Spirit of God, I know you're leading me into it. This is how you win. This is how you become effective. A lot of people walked away from destiny relationship, from divine connection. God put them together with others and they just break the relationship and they just walked away and they walked into debt. They walked into frustration. Let me say this to you. Whatever God wants you to do, he will also put a divine relationship, divine connections in your life that will help you move in the direction of his will. Divine connections are important in unlocking supernatural destinies. I said divine connection is important in unlocking supernatural destinies. You can truly unlock a supernatural destiny without divine connection. That is why the Bible talks about that the foundation is built by the apostles and the prophets. You know, the apostles and the prophets are out there to teach, to equip, to empower God's people as they can flow in the things of the Spirit, as they can, as they can mature and come into the will of the Father and flow with God. You can hear the voice of God. It's not difficult to know the voice of God. It's not difficult to hear from God. It's not difficult to do the will of God. It's not difficult to walk by faith. It's not difficult to reign in life. You can hear the voice of God. You can submit to the leadership of the Spirit. You can say, Lord, thank you for showing me what to do. Lord, thank you for helping me to know what to do. By the Spirit, we make decisions. By the Spirit, we become productive. Never ignore the Holy Spirit. Never ignore the Word of God. Never ignore your time of fellowship, your time of meditating on the Word of God, building up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. This is a requirement for the Spirit-led life. Building up, building up. Building up. Be hungry for his word. Be hungry for his presence. Be hungry for his will. Be hungry for his ways of doing things. Be hungry for God. A lot of people are losing their hunger for God. They are dry for the things of the spirit. Their passion for God. This hunger. Hunger to live according to his word. Hunger to put Jesus first. He said godliness or contentment is a great game. In a lot of people today don't talk about godliness. They don't talk about a lifestyle of holiness how to how to conduct yourself how to live your life the grace of god came that we will live the god life the primary purpose of the grace of god is that we live the god life we manifest the god life we will become what jesus said you are the city set on the hill you are the light of the world grace is not weak grace did not come to make us feeble grace came to make us strong grace came to help us to live the god life to to reflect jesus in our conversation our thinking in our action in the things we do grace is not weak grace is transformational grace transform grace empowers grace inspires grace moves you to greater strength if you have the true revelation of the grace of god righteousness will be a focus Holiness will be a focus. Godliness will be a focus. People will see you and they could connect with the God in you. They could tell that she's born again. Like Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. Grace produce fruits. Grace will produce the fruits of righteousness, the fruit of holiness. There is a lifestyle when you're graceful, when you're grace-minded. Grace is not do whatever you want to do. No. Grace only permits you to do things that are consistent with the nature of God. Grace does not ask 
are set on godliness, on righteousness. Uh, grace empowers my God. If you have the revelation of the grace of God, people will look at you and say, look at Jesus walking. <laughs> look at Jesus. That's what they'll be saying. Look at Jesus. Look at him. Look at Jesus. You, people will see the Christ in you. They will see the kingdom in you. They will see God in you. It is easy for them to feel it. It is easy for them to know it. They can, they can easily touch it and say, wow, this is what I want. This is who I want to be. He said, let your light so shine that men will see. That is what it's all about. The true grace will cause your light to shine. The men will see and say, wow, this is what I want to see. This is where I want to be. Hallelujah. So the grace of God exonerates you from a sinful lifestyle. I said, the grace of God will exonerate you from a sinful lifestyle. It will snatch you out of sin and just take it out. You know, grace messed up sin. Grace will just snatch you out of sin and you, you don't have that appetite for adultery, for fornication, for lies, for deception. When, when you have the revelation of his grace, friend, your life will change. I'm telling you. The grace, he said we are saved by grace. That was why the grace saved us. We are saved by grace. Look at the sinful nature of grace. Mm. Just take, take, took us out of that situation. We are saved by grace through faith. And God is saying to us today, you can reign in life. You can hear the voice of God. You can, you, can, you can walk in dominion, you can walk in power, you can reign in life. I believe that God has called you to take the lead. I believe that you are anointed to speak the word of God and become a person of excellence, influence, and greatness. I believe that you can be led by the Spirit of God. It is not difficult to hear the voice of God. It's not difficult to know His will. His peace will lead you. The peace of God. If you make a decision and you don't have peace about it, you don't have to worry about it. If you make a decision and you don't have peace about it, it, you don't need to bother about it. God does not push you to do his will. God does not force you to believe his word. God is not controlling. God is not manipulating. God does not say, if you don't do this now, I will kill you. That is not the voice of God. That is not how, God doesn't have that character. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? God will suggest something to you. God will say something to you. Then expect you to reply. Expect you to respond. God is not going around destroying people's home, destroying people's life, punishing people, giving people cancer. That is not God. Jesus said, I came that you will have life and have it more abundantly. It is time for you to believe the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you. He has a plan for you. Hearing from him should be your ultimate goal in this season. And God is speaking. He's saying something. He's ministering. He's speaking. And he's speaking right inside of you right now. You're hearing his voice. There are things he's telling you. Adjust this area. Deal with this area. Deal with that area. He's talking to you right now. You see, God is a loving father. He's a caring father. He has a plan for your destiny, a plan for your ministry, a, a plan for your vision. You can hear the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to your people. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is one of the things I like to do at the end of every broadcast. I do teachings I do because I want people to know about Jesus. This is the starting point of your transformation. When Christ takes over, the life becomes better. So if you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. So I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faithman Teachings on YouTube. It's Faithman Teachings on YouTube. And also, you can get my books on Amazon. 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future is available on Amazon.com. There is Greatness in You is my recent book. So I want you to go to Amazon today and order for those books and give to your friends, give to your brothers, your sisters, 
and share this material with them, it will change their life. I promise it will change your life. And also, if you're watching this broadcast, I want to encourage you to watch me every day on finishworktv.com. Finishwork TV stream 24 7, helping people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. So, watch Finishwork TV. Tell your friends about Finishwork TV. I'd like you to tell your friends on your Facebook page, on your tweet, and your, use your tweet handle and tell more people about Finish Work TV. God's word is changing lives around the world. So today, if you're watching, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. You see, partnership is helping me to continue to minister the word of God to many people around the world. So you can partner with me today or partner with this ministry by going to finishworktv.com, finishworktv.com and slash giving and give as the Spirit of God will lead you. I want you to do that today and let's trust God together to, to reach out to more people. You know, Paul was ministering in Romans chapter 16. He said something, he said, Greet me, Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. The success of the ministry of Apostle Paul was not based only on the revelation he had, but also on the network of people who supported him to ensure that the gospel spread. Partnership is strategic. When you hear the word of God and it blesses you, think on how you can support, how you can be a blessing, how you can make the message go around. It's the kingdom we're building. It's not about Apostle Faithman, it's about our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my future broadcast. As I come your way soon, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon.